Now on to something a little bit uh, sad and yet another kick in the teeth for metal music being the recent Dawson College shooting. Now it's claimed that the gunman was said to be a Megadeth fan and I know how frustrating it is when your music is enjoyed by many people around the world. It only takes one person to sort of put a black cloud under it again. Uh, you know, what were your thoughts on that when right. that came to uh, light? Well, I've, I've had a relationship with the city of Montreal for a while. About nine years ago, the city was frozen solid. All the power went out in the city. There was a huge ice storm. And uh, a couple of days after they got the power turned back on, we did a concert there, and I said, anybody who brings any canned food or any blankets or anything like that, um, we would give them passes, and, and I would personally thank them. So we donated a bunch of food and blankets to the shelters in Montreal. So... I've always liked that city. Plus, Glenn and Sean, um, when they were kids, they lived in Montreal. Yeah. So when I when I first saw the when I first saw the news, I was really angry and hurt. And then when I saw that that guy had connected me to it, I was pissed. Mm. And um, I was thinking, you know what? That that guy's not a Megadeth fan because Megadeth fans don't do stuff like that. Of Megadeth fans rise and conquer. They don't do cowardly things like that. And do you find that people just tend to yet again focus in on heavy metal, blaming that sort of uh, you know actions, which is always yet, as I said, another kick in the teeth towards the the genre itself that you know doesn't deserve to have uh, you know the beatings that it's been getting over the years from the media. No, actually, the way that that was handled, um, I immediately got on the phone. We immediately arranged the press statement and talked to all the newspapers and television stations up there and said, you know what was going on, they said, because we had a concert, we had to do a couple of days after that had happened in Montreal, and they said, are you going to play it to Le Mans? And I said, absolutely, that song belongs to the people of Montreal. Mm-hmm. The, that the person who had committed the murders, um, he's not going to control us from the grave. Yeah. We're, we're going to go forward, that song's dedicated in love to the living, and, and, and it's dedicated in peace to the people who are hurt and healing, and it's dedicated to the memory of people who have lost their lives. And I said, you know, that for everybody who perished in that, um, they're going to be looking down from heaven watching that guy fly in hell. And, and um, you know, it was, I, it was a terrible thing, but we, uh, we made sure that the people in Montreal knew that my heart lied with, with them. Yeah, the the people who were living and, and it was it was on the side of good. It, I I did not um, in any way um, want to be associated with that other with the murderer. And the thing too is is sad, Andrew, is that if you read what he had on his website, yeah, that guy was screaming for help. The things that he was saying, the pictures of him with his knives and guns and everything. But that wasn't the guy saying, look, I need help. I don't know what it is. Yeah, exactly. And it shows you how society's just kind of gotten numb yep. to you know, threats and, and, you know, I'll kill you. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll kick your ass. I'll stab you. I'll poke your eyes out. You know, it's like, you know, nowadays that's, that people take that as just chatter. Exactly. Back in the 60s or, or you know. Uh, uh, earlier than that, if someone said something like that, it was really a threat. Well, let's get back onto something a bit more positive. Hopefully you will include that song in your set list for the up-and-coming Gigantua Tour, which is only uh, a few weeks away. Let's check out the dates. The first show is on Saturday the 21st at the Riverside Stage in Brisbane, Sunday the 22nd at the Horden Pavilion in Sydney, and on Tuesday the 24th at Festival Hall. Now, this is the fourth time Megadeth have hit Australia over the years. What are you hoping for this time around? Just more of the same, more of me putting smiles on the faces of the beautiful Australian fans. I tell you, there's something about your country that I find so fascinating. To me, it reminds me if if you took all of England and, and they lived on the beach yep. and, uh, and um, had a sense of humor. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, that, uh, that's kind of what Australia reminds me of. Um, I, I, uh, one other thing I thought was really cool, I mean, this is just me, but I liked what your prime minister said. If you live in Australia, you better act Australian or get the fuck out. Now, that may, that may have made a lot of people mad, but you know what? If that's what's one of the saddest things that's happening in the world right now is that governments are becoming cowards, yep. especially in my country. <laughs> Absolutely.
Well, what track do you want to hear, Dave, to uh, to conclude our chat? We probably can go with probably your favourite, well, one of your favourite Megadeth tracks, just for uh, for the old time's sake. Well, one of my all-time favorite Megadeth songs is obviously Holy Wars, but I think given the fact that we've had such a good conversation, I would say Kick the Chair. Kick the Chair, fantastic. We'll look forward to having you back again, Dave, and uh, everyone out there should definitely get out and check out the Monstrous Gigant Tour Tour because it probably is the first ever traveling metal festival we've had of this magnitude in this country. So lap it up, get out, and headbang. Let's check out some Megadeth on Triple J. Thanks for your time, Dave. You're welcome, Andrew, and I can't wait to see you again, buddy. Let's uh, let's get together and host a few. Definitely. Let's check out some Megadeth on Triple J. Cheers, buddy.